What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, today I will be giving my top 10 favorite WrestleMania matches of all time. Shout out to my homie Chris. He was the one that gave me this idea. So, I was like, you know what? Let me try to actually come up with the list, really sit down and think about what are my favorite WrestleMania matches of all time, compile the list, and make a video for you guys so that's what i'm doing here i also want to put this out there this is my top 10 favorite list this is not yours this is just my list my opinion you can also list yours down below in the comment section and we can compare and discuss so if you don't see your favorite match on here please don't get mad these are just my personal preferences i have to always put this out there on videos where i do lists because somebody will always comment why you didn't have this on the list because it's not on my list it's not my personal preference uh i'm not gonna do an honorable mention because there's a lot of matches i can put in honorable mentions and i'm not trying to make this video too long so we're gonna get right into the list starting from 10 and working our way up to number one if you know me well you probably already know what my favorite wrestlemania match is of all time so we're gonna start with number 10 Roman versus Edge versus Daniel Bryan at uh, WrestleMania 37, man. I love this match because of, one, this was the first Mania back where there were people allowed to be there. So it was good to have that. Some of the crowd there in attendance. I love the build up to this match. I love the intensity that all the wrestlers brought to this. And it was cool to see this version of Roman Reigns. This is Roman Reigns damn near at his peak of his reign, just taking out everybody and how it played out. I, probably one of the most noticeable images from this match is the double submission where Roman Reigns literally can't go nowhere. Like, he's in a situation where he's pretty much screwed. He can't even barely tap out. He got the, he one arm is hit with the, uh, with the label lock, I believe, and then the other arm is hit with the, the broken leg of the chair, like cross face type of situation. And both Edge and Daniel Bryan start looking at each other, trying to get them to tap out, and then they start fighting each other. I just, I love this match. The feud was great. The build up to it was fantastic. And I like the ending. He stacked both of them. Roman Reigns stacked both of them and pinned both of them. It, it gave like, yo, this guy is going to take somebody <laughs> incredible to take down Roman Reigns. And I love this match. It's a match I can go back and watch many, many times. And uh, if you haven't seen the match, go check it out. This was really, really good. And it had to be in my top 10 for me personally. All right, we got number nine, HBK versus Ric Flair. Retirement match at WrestleMania 24. This match had so much emotional weight around this time the stipulation was if rick flair lost any match at this point he would have to retire which was a cool way to give some intrigue to rick flair's career you know it was it was a cool way to get people interested because no one really wanted to see him retire or whatnot but you was wondering who was going to be the guy to do it so when they set this match up the emotions were there this obviously in my opinion and i think a lot of people's opinion i think this was the match of the night for a lot of people at this wrestlemania this was a very good emotionally story driven match um and probably one of the most iconic things to happen in this match is the right before the sweet chin music he's about to uh so hbk is about to give to um to rick flair he he tells him i love you like you you hear the you see him voice the words the emotions on Shawn michael's face like i don't want to have to do this and rick flair's like come on bro if you're gonna do it do it do it correctly hit him with sweet chin music one two three and he went to embrace him afterwards it was such a beautiful moment and at that time foolish of me i'm thinking oh well yeah, this is this will be the last time we see Ric Flair in a wrestling ring. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> I honestly do. Part of me wishes he probably should have retired at that moment. Like, legit retired at that moment. Because that was a great match for him to end off his career. But 
he had other plans. So, but either way, this is a mania, uh, mania match. I will always remember for the emotional weight it had and the passion and uh, that was in the story that was told between these two guys. So fantastic. Um, we got number eight. HBK versus Triple H versus Chris Benoit, WrestleMania 20. Now, I know some people are like, oh, why would you have Chris Benoit on this list? I'm not celebrating what he did leading up to his death and the death of his family members. I will never condone that. And I think that's really messed up and it's just truly heartbreaking, that whole story. But I'm not going to deny he had some great matches and this was one of them. This was a fantastic match. I love this match, not just because of Chris Benoit was in it. I like the match because this was a, a long rivalry between Triple H and HBK. Chris Benoit ended up in the mix. And I like that they, they really kind of played up the fact that some people were saying maybe Chris Benoit doesn't deserve to really be there. So it really should be Triple H and HBK. And I like that. It was more so like Triple H and APK, like, we don't stand each other, but you don't deserve to be here. You don't belong in the mix. And I just loved it. The match was fantastic. I enjoyed it for what it was. And they really made Chris Benoit look like a main event guy, like a top guy. And I, I, it, it was just a, a such a beautiful and surreal moment. It's just obviously a moment that a lot of people tend to overlook. But I had to put it in my my top 10 because it's one of my favorite matches from that mania so I, I had to put it up in there and just one of my favorite triple threat matches of all time it's just three guys i cared about and it they made they made the world heavyweight championship seem the most important championship of all time so i i can appreciate that despite the situations that happened many many years later and if i'm gonna go with that being my number eight number seven for me is Eddie versus Kurt Angle at that very same WrestleMania 20. Fantastic match. Love this match. They sh put on a clinic. Rest in peace, Eddie. It, it was just great. It was just a very overall great storytelling of a match. And I, I loved every bit of it. People just loved Eddie. Heel face doesn't matter. Lie, steal, and, che lie, steal and cheat doesn't matter. Eddie was the guy and uh it, it what made this great for me and more memorable than just the match itself is the moment after and the moment where uh where eddie and um and and chris benoit they embraced each other as the guys at the top of the at the top of the food chain at the top of wwe it was such a beautiful moment oh man bro i just wish things would have played out differently but um it's just it's one of those moments and this was a pretty good solid wrestlemania definitely go check out both of those matches if you haven't there were some good uh main and cold main event uh matches and i i just i really do wish things would have ended differently when it came to eddie and chris benoit they're they both gone too soon you know what i'm saying in a horrible situation so but yeah those matches for me stand the test of time and one of the better wrestlemanias so Let's get into number six. It's going to be an interesting one, but I think a lot of you may agree on this one. Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, WrestleMania 31. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The very first bout. This was right around the time no one cared for Roman. It didn't matter what Roman did. He was going to get booed. When he ended up facing Brock Lesnar for the very first time, he got booed. But guess what? This was their best match to date at that time. Well, obviously, it was their first match, but this was their best match. Any match after that, outside of the last man standing match from this year, was fantastic. Any match after that never lived up to this. And when we're just talking about one on one competition, it never lived up to this. This match had no right being as good as it was, and it was fantastic. I love this match. I don't even know why. Because you're, you're traditionally not supposed to be rooting for the, the heel to be beating the crap out of the baby face. But it worked. It worked. And I loved it. And they pulled probably one of the greatest audibles of all time. Because we all thought Roman was going to get the win here. We thought he was going to overcome the odds. No. When Seth Rollins' music hit and he runs down the ramp and he ends up 
cashing in and he ends up winning the wwe championship and michael cole calling this the heist of the century which it was it was fantastic that was probably the best way they could have ever ended this pay-per-view it was so good bro him doing the helicopter swing with the belt it was fantastic wrestlemania 31 roman versus brock definitely had to be in my top 10 this was a all-time classic easily their best match they've had outside of the last man last man standing match they had uh this year at SummerSlam. all right we're, we're breaking the top five number five the end of an era match hell in a cell at wrestlemania 28 this is probably the only match i cared about on that show and boy was it good Around this time, Hell in a Cell was a yearly thing on, on WWE television. I mean, it still is. But it was it was just so, the Hell in a Cell match was so watered down and trash. No one cared. No one cared about a Hell in a Cell match because you knew you was going to get one every single year, once a year. But people cared about this one. People cared about this one because this was right around a time where you had HBK had to retire because he lost to The Undertaker. Triple H still couldn't get the job done and beat The Undertaker. They all have history with each other. So you said, you know what? We're going to have an end of an era match. We're going to finish this once and for all. Triple HBK is going to be a special guest referee. I love the promo segments. I love the back and forth. I love the mind games. And it makes sense that all three of these guys be in this match. One refereeing because... Obviously, HBK had retired at this point, and two two competitors have been the most dominant in a Hell in a Cell. Like this was so great because the history with all these guys in the Hell in a Cell is it 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 wrote itself. Match was great, fantastic. This was one of the first times I really genuinely thought, okay, it's over. The Undertaker streak is about to end. You guys know what sequence I'm talking about. I'm talking about the sequence where um, The Undertaker shoves HBK as the referee. And HBK ends up super kicking him. Triple H hits him with the pedigree. One, two, he kicked out. Crowd goes crazy. I go crazy. Shawn Michaels selling it. He just scampers into the corner because he can't believe the match is not over. It was just great, bro. This this really should have been the end of an era for <clears throat> for all these guys. I would have been okay at least at this point if Triple H would have called it quits. Hell, I would have been okay if The Undertaker would have been like, all right, I'm going to end off on this note. I, w I think a lot of us would have been okay if this was going to be their last send off but oh unfortunately that saudi money <laughs> says otherwise so yeah it wasn't their last send off we had to witness some other debacles from these gentlemen that in my opinion should have never happened but that's neither here nor there either way one of the better hell in a cell matches you will ever see so definitely go check it out if you haven't <clears throat> all right we're at number four I love this match. This match is iconic and legendary. TLC, table ladders and chairs match at WrestleMania 17. In my hometown in Houston at the time, you had Edge and Christian versus the Hardys versus the Dudleys. It's a TLC match, bro. What, what do I got to say? TLC 2 at that. What, what do I have to say? This is one of the most iconic TLC matches ever. Ever. The spots alone they were doing in this match, insane. Still stand the test of time. Y'all know which spot I'm about to talk about. The most infamous wrestling spot ever. They used to actually have this wrestling spot in the intro graphic to all their shows. The infamous Jeff Hardy hanging onto the titles and then edge on the opposite side of the ring on top of the ladder spearing jeff hardy from the from where he's hanging on to the titles spearing him all the way to the map below jr selling it on commentary 
The spear looked like it broke him in half. The crowd's going crazy. It's the most iconic TLC match ever. Carnage, destruction. Go watch it. Just go watch it. If you want to see OG tag team wrestling at its finest, some of its craziestness, crazy moments, just go watch it, bro. I don't I don't even have to say much about it. It's just it was, it was just fantastic, and it just made it so sweeter. It was at the Astronome at the time in Houston, Texas, man. One of my favorite tag team matches and one of my favorite TLC matches of all time. All right, for number three, this is when the list got really, 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 really tough for me. It was just so tough. But number three for me has to be HBK versus The Undertaker. At WrestleMania 25, their first go around. And of course, it was in Houston, Texas. Um, this match stole the show. This match right here stole the show. Stole the show. This was the best match of the night. I don't think people expected it to be, but this was... I, I can't even describe how I felt watching this match. The goosebumps I felt, the selling, the storytelling, the fact that HBK had kicked out of a tombstone and The Undertaker sold it like, what the fuck? The crowd sold it. JR on commentary selling it. I'm losing it. I'm like, is he the guy to do it? Of course he wasn't. But this match stole the show. I believe the main event that year, correct me if I'm wrong, was uh randy orton versus triple h which kind of failed it it, it 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 didn't live up to expectation the build-up was fantastic for that match i believe the stipulation was if h uh if triple h ended up getting disqualified the title would change hands i think they should have probably switched the stipulation up um to maybe like a no disqualification match or whatever but the match it it, it could not live up to what we saw that 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 should have been the main event couldn't live up there was no way any other match could live up to what we saw between hbk and the undertaker so so good i i implore you if you haven't seen this match go watch it you will definitely enjoy all right number two match stone cold versus the rock wrestlemania 17 back in houston again this this for me is so synonymous because it was two of my favorite wrestlers. Y'all know I had to at least have one of their Mania matches on here. And this has to be on there because of the simple fact that it didn't even matter that Stone Cold was turning heel at this point, which I still think, you know, obviously it was a mistake because it didn't really work. It didn't even matter. He was so over, it didn't matter. It, he, he could have did whatever he wanted to. All people wanted to see was Stone Cold get the win here, bro. I love, the love JR's commentary on this. I love the implications of what was to come next after this. This match was fantastic. The Rock sold it. And The Rock looked like a, just someone. It was so hard for Stone Cold to beat that he had to cheat to beat him. And guess what? When he ended up cheating to beat him, didn't matter. The crowd went crazy. I still went crazy. Even though I was confused on why he's shaking his hand, I was like, well, fuck it. He's the champion, so whatever. Maybe he's going to turn on him on Monday Night Raw. That's what I was thinking when I was younger. Like, he's going to he's gonna attack Vince. It's just all a ploy to get the championship. And I love this match because of JR's commentary. <laughs> the Rock, I mean, Stone Cold is sold his soul to the devil himself. It was fantastic. I love this. Easily... It's, it's top two for me. It, it was going to be in my top five regardless. This is a match I will always remember how hot the crowd was, how lively it was, and just just the Rock and Stone Cold main event in the WrestleMania. What can you not love about that? All right. And we're finally to the match that, uh, honestly, it... it it wasn't really that difficult to figure out what my number one match was. In fact, I actually made this when I was making the list. This I, I put this on the list first. My number one match 
Daniel Bryan versus Batista versus Randy Orton in WrestleMania 30. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you guys know me, you've heard me say this plenty of times in multiple vids. This, for me, is my favorite WrestleMania match of all time for the simple fact that it gave me vibes of the Attitude Era in the sense of following a babyface that's trying to overcome the, the odds. Around this time, it was the authority. Back then, in the Attitude Era, Stone Cold was trying to overcome the odds against Vince McMahon and the corporation. Like, you know, his version of the authority. And I just love this so much because Daniel Bryan was the ultimate underdog. They have been building this story for months since SummerSlam the year prior to WrestleMania 30. They have been building this up. Now, granted, this only happens because CM Punk leaves. We know if CM Punk doesn't leave, we don't get this Mania match. And it's one of those things where... I'm actually glad CM Punk did leave because we got probably one of the greatest endings to a story WWE has put on, in my opinion, ever. This was fantastic. Earlier in, in the night, you start off the night with Triple H versus Daniel Bryan. If Daniel Bryan wins, he gets inserted into the match. They had a great opener. This crowd is super hot. This is the, the yes movement at its peak. Everyone's chanting yes. The Daniel Bryan wins. He ends up getting attacked by Triple H. They're selling the arm. How will he be able to fare later on in the main event? Then you have arguably one of the most, if not the shocking, the most shocking moment in WrestleMania history of all time. The Undertaker losing to Brock Lesnar in a underwhelming match, obviously, because I believe Brock has suffered a concussion. Not Brock, uh, The Undertaker uh, suffered a concussion during the match so the match was not that good but the way the energy left the crowd me watching it live i'm like what the fuck is going on like i've never seen utter shock between like it, over 20 30 000 people are just just can't believe what they just saw so the crowd energy is gone at this point they're they're deflated we get back to the main event the crowd starts picking back up the energy because now Daniel Bryan got to win it for us. We can't have The Undertaker losing and Daniel Bryan losing in the same pay-per-view. That crowd would have went ballistic. Pro, yes. I mean, the yes movement just at its peak, like I was saying. They had a fantastic match. This was a match of Daniel Bryan not only trying to overcome his injury, caused by Triple H. He's trying to overcome two guys that nobody wanted to see in the main event at this time. He's trying to overcome them. They start working in tandem as a tag team or whatnot. They start working as a tag team. Uh, they ended up crazy spot. Daniel Bryan ends up getting Batista Palm Bat Batista Palm into a RKO, but it didn't work. The timing was off. And Randy Orton ended up getting the worst of that because he ended up landing right onto them old monitors they used to have. Square on his back. Looked very painful. They're carting him out. They're selling this. They're selling this whole story and whatnot. Then Daniel Bryan's trying to fight through. He's getting off the uh off the stretcher. Like, no, I'm I'm getting back into this match. The crowd is getting hype. Then you have Triple H and Stephanie get into the mix. You have a dirty referee also in the mix, like a dirty official also in the mix. You're like, how is he going to overcome this? He was able to overcome this. We was able to see Stephanie get her get her uh, just desserts. We was able to see Triple H get his dust, you know, just desserts. They pulling out the sledgehammer. It was good to see them get smacked up with it. And then this is probably the moment where if I was doing reactions at this time this definitely would have got a lot of views on YouTube. I remember this like it was yesterday. The camera work on this was perfect because you had certain people out of frame. You had Batista. I believe he hit the Batista palm on Randy Orton. He rose out of frame. Then all of a sudden you see Daniel Bryan fly in the frame, hit Batista with the running knee, gets him on the ground, then puts him in the label lock, 
and probably the best one of the best commentary calls from Michael Cole that always gives me goosebumps. All you hear on 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 the uh, commentator side of things is tap out Batista, tap out Batista, tap out Batista. Crowd is going crazy at this point, and Batista taps out. When I say it's it's a goosebump type moment because the crowd erupts and Daniel Bryan is your new champion the guy that no one expected the guy that no one really thought could be the champion especially with how Vince McMahon views his world champions to see the fact that the fans had some say in this the fans actually got the guy they wanted to see at the top was fantastic it's one of the greatest wrestling stories of all time. This is this match and how it ended made Daniel Bryan even more of a household name. This is why people want to see Daniel Bryan as a champion or Bryan Danielson as he goes by in AEW. This was great. This was fantastic. I was losing my shit when this happened. I mean, just completely. I was running around the house screaming at the top of my lungs. Yes. They finally did it. It was it was a great moment, a very surreal moment, and I'm so glad I was able to just witness that live, man. Easily. My favorite rat, favorite WrestleMania match of all time. And that's my list. So I wanna know. Comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite WrestleMania match, matches of all time. Make your top 10 list down below in the comment section so we can discuss and compare you know and let me know what you guys think of my list you know and saying i really want to get your opinions on that if if a, ma if a match didn't make it on here don't take it personally this is just my personal taste on which matches i will always just truly remember in my mind but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel Road to 100K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one.